Uh, my role on the Kairos delegation to Palestine was to represent the Primates World Relief and Development Fund, also known as PWRDF. Uh, for those of you who don't know, PWRDF is the Anglican Church of Canada's Agency for uh, Sustainable Development and Relief, and we have enjoyed a long-standing relationship with Kairos Canada. Uh, for me, one of the highlights of the trip came when a small uh, group of us traveled to the Gaza Strip. If you were listening before the break, you would have heard uh, Bishop Susan Johnson tell a little bit about that trip. Uh, while we were there, we met with the staff of the Al Ali Hospital in Gaza City, and we learned directly from them about special uh, urology equipment that the hospital purchased through PWRDF support. This uh, urology equipment is being used to address a serious problem uh, that affects many people in Gaza, but particularly is devastating to the children of Gaza. And that problem is kidney stones. Uh, as some of you heard before the break, the drinking water of Gaza is so uh, terribly contaminated, largely because of seawater intrusion from the Mediterranean, but also because of over pumping and pollution. And so that means that the only safe source of drinking water is bottled water. And for a large portion of the population that lives on something like five or six dollars per day, bottled water is simply not an option. And consequently, far too many people have no choice but to drink the, the only water uh, that is available to them. And of course, that is uh, water that is damaging to their health. So after seeing the urology equipment, it was reassuring to know that this small hospital in Gaza City now has some equipment to treat kidney stones and to help some of the most vulnerable citizens of that place. On the slide, you'll see a picture. Um, if you look at it closely, um, you'll, see, you'll notice that uh, we're looking at some shelves in the hospital pharmacy. You'll also notice that uh, nobody in the picture is smiling, and that's because we're uh, listening to some very grim statistics. The pharmacist in the, in the lab coat is telling us that at any given time, about half of the medical supplies in the hospital pharmacy are at a zero balance. We are looking at shelves that are uh, more empty than they are full. We were told that the hospital draws up an annual budget, but it just takes one brief episode of violence with Israeli forces to render that budget completely meaningless. As a result, money that could have been used to fund programs like neonatal nutrition or uh, breast cancer screening, this money gets diverted to the immediate challenge of treating uh, patients with gunshot wounds or worse. And so the big learning for me in all this was that far too often, like so many places around the globe, it is the women and children who end up suffering. Women and children are the victims of the ongoing blockade of Gaza and what has been called the de-development of Gaza. And that's to say absolutely nothing about this horrendous threat of COVID-19. Sadly, the women and the children are far too often the ones who go without necessary treatment. Well, the promising news, uh, as I heard it, was that there is a lot of care and compassion that is being offered and shown in this hospital in Gaza City. Uh, the programs that are being offered have a profound positive effect on the lives of women and children. And at the same time, these program, programs remain very fragile and very vulnerable. And so they depend so much on our ongoing support and on, on our ongoing advocacy. Thanks so much.